Hello guys, today we will be talking about class management. So in this video, you will get tips on how you can successfully manage and teach your class. Whether you are teaching in kindergarten or primary school, we got you covered. This will include the details on how I teach on daily basis and how to deal with attentive kids and inattentive ones. Before we get started, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so now and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, leave your comments and share. First things first, a great warm up is one of the most significant determinants of how your class will go. Be very observant so you can find out what your kids are interested in and capitalize on it. It works big time. The thing about teaching kids is that you must be able to act silly and be like one. You must know your kids to be able to teach them. This is challenging, especially when your kids are pre-K or K-1 and your job is to teach them English. They are coming in with zero English or a few disorganized vocabulary. You must be patient. If not, it will soon dawn on you that teaching kids isn't your thing. As an excellent teacher that you are, you must plan your lesson and be able to visualize your class in your mind, how it's going to go from the very beginning to the end. If you plan any games, make sure you have substitutes. Sometimes you plan a game and it just doesn't work out or as planned or kids aren't interested in it. You might get stuck if you have no alternatives. How your kids sit in class is a huge indicator that determines the success of your class. Let them sit in a semicircle or a circle. However they sit, they must be able to see you and vice versa. They should be able to see what you are doing clearly from whatever angle they sit. Now, what I do is, from the start of my class, I'll count from 10 to 1. When I get to one and they are not on their seats and ready for the class, I would just pretend to kind of kick their bottoms from a distance without touching them though. This gives them, this gives the class a giggle, which is pretty much great for the start of the class. I always start my class with some kind of play, some kind of um, um, a way, jovial way to get them to 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 be ready for it like sometimes i just maybe inflate a balloon and toss it up and down play with with them then the next thing that i do is i introduce class rules number one is always sit nicely you have to have them sit nicely with your hands behind their backs or on your knees you want to make sure their hands don't move too much when you are teaching Number two, you have to let them look at you every time. Like you just tell them, look at me. And this depends on what you do constantly to hold their attention. Because looking at you, you will have to do what it takes for them to keep looking at you. And number three, no other language should be spoken in class except the one you are teaching. You must let them understand that it's English time and so only English can be spoken. Then you jump to number four, listen to you. They teach the, the kids have to be able to listen to the teacher. Uh, and this also largely depends on how you enforce the other rules. No playing unless the teacher tells you, you know, that's another one. And then you have to make sure they don't run in class, they don't yell, and they don't touch each other. For pre K and K1, I usually introduce a rule or two per week because it's not easy for them to understand the rules and what they actually mean. When you're done with the rules, you must let them know what they stand to gain if they obey. You know, kids, <laughs> it's some kind of a treat. You have to make sure they understand what they're going to gain. What do they stand to gain if they follow these rules? So they get to earn a sticker or more at the end of the class. Here, if you've taught kids from pre-K to K3 or higher, you will realize that as they get to higher classes, they are no longer interested in stickers. What I do is for K3, I buy affordable playful toys and you earn a toy when you accumulate 
up to 10 stickers. Sometimes I get six gifts for three outstanding girls and three outstanding boys for the month or just buy a gift for the best student of the month. These gifts are bought at the beginning of the month so they get to see them on daily basis. It kind of reminds them to do all in their power to pay attention. Most of the times, I divide my class into two teams and reward them with stars or Legos and the team with the most at the end of the class wins and so they get stickers. Sometimes I write the names of the kids in a way that they cannot figure out the names I have written. Other times I write the kids' names and reward them individually with stars and at the end of the class they get stickers equal to the number of stars. This system of rewarding kids as they learn is very effective. However, I also erase the stars depending on the attentiveness. Besides having stickers, getting a toy when you have up to 10 stickers, there are also games like fishing game, soccer game, hit the mall, and so on. They get to choose what game to play at the end of the class. For kids that don't pay attention, I always tell them that they won't get any stickers or play any games after class that i will report them to their parents and when i do their parents won't be happy they too would not be happy and in turn their parents would not be able to buy them nice things because they're not happy you know and it works sometimes quite well if they are in k3 or k2 i will tell them that they are behaving inappropriately or as babies and so I will take them to K1 or to pre-K. Trust me, they hit this big time. <laughs> Sometimes the most inattentive one sits beside me so I can easily control and use them as an example to others who are not paying attention. For those who hit or touch their friends inappropriately, I always tell them that I will call the police and I always get my phone and pretentiously make a call. I try my best to make sure they know what they will be missing if they are not attentive. I also praise the effort of the attentive kids to encourage the inattentive ones. However, you must avoid overpraising and encourage everyone to work hard. Knowing the native language of these kids you are teaching is a plus. You can understand what they are saying if they have complaints they can't express in English. This doesn't mean you should speak the native language to them. Try to respond in English. This is where TPR comes in. The importance of TPR cannot be overemphasized. You must assign a TPR to everything you do to teach your kids, especially pre-K, K1, and even K2. Thank you for watching and if you like this video, share with your friends and please don't forget to subscribe and share your thoughts in the comment section.